guys, welcome back. Um, part two of narcissism. Um, I know last week's episode, we're getting the seriousness out of the way because uh, you know, <laughs> we'll, we'll get to some fun topics later. But I wanted to talk about more this time because the last time we talked more about the cycle of abuse and some signs that you might be in it. Um, today, I want to talk about how to get out of it because it's easy to feel stuck, um, especially if there's children involved, you got to get a lawyer and you got to get all this stuff you got to. And then I know from working in the sheriff's department previously, I know cases like that are really hard to prove in court, especially like stalking is one of the hardest things to prove because you have to document everything. You got to make a huge list every time they contact you, every time you see them, every time anything. You just keep writing, keep writing, keep writing. And it sometimes it takes until you get to the bottom of the list before finally something gets done. And it's just right. one of those things. Because um, sometimes people lie and now we got to have a bunch of proof in order to get you what you need. So what are some of the resources you have used personally in your experience, Miss Karen? Yeah. So like you said, it emotional and mental abuse is one, it is super hard to prove. Like you can, you can easily, you know, go in there and you got a black eye or you're bleeding or whatever, broken bones, you're in the hospital, so many things, trigger warning. Um, but like emotional and mental abuse is so hard to prove. And like you said, you have to document everything, um, cameras, on your house. Um, I recently spoke to a friend of mine that I ran into in the grocery store. When you talk about stalking, um, this person had even gone to lengths of making a review at their job, you know, different things like that. Like, like a it, Yelp. It, yes. <laughs> yes. And, um, on two different, uh, exes. So like, it wasn't just like her, then they went in, into the, the lengths of doing like, um, I'm sorry, another... but that's just boredom. Like really? It's just like, you have nothing better to do with your life, but then to like, try to make ours hell. Like it's, it's insane. I was in, when we we're talking about resources, one of the resources are support groups. There's so many support groups out here that you can find on your phone. You know, there may not, you may not be able to find something locally, but like, Facebook has tons of resources, tons of different support groups. Um, somebody was putting something on there and I said, you know, basically like she was talking about something that we, we don't like to say like my narc, we're trying to get out of it. Like say your ex narc or the narc did was, um, she was venting about it. And I was like, obviously, yes, their goal is to destroy us, period. They sought us out. Um, they know their victims before they even attack. Like they're like a lion who's like, like looking at their prey. So they know before they even attack, like that's, that's what I found. So like mind blowing and bizarre was that they literally will look at you and they pinpoint certain characteristics that they go after. And it's similar. You know, a lot of people think that we're weak because we stay in these relationships. Um, well, sometimes wanna... they don't even know they're doing it. Like if you're, if you, there's people who will, I want to say, like, gravitate towards a certain kind of people without even knowing. Like, they might be a narcissist and not even understand that they're a narcissist. They just not, like, giving them any, you know, leeway. They know but what I'm, they're doing. They know what they're doing. These people are not new at what they're doing. They've been doing this for a long time. Um, as far as from, from what I've heard, like, from my research, my counseling, my support groups, um, the, like the people that I follow that talk about narcissism, like they know, they know, like, and they've been like, they, like, they will study you. That's what I find so freaking scary when you sit back and you think about it because they sought you for a reason and a purpose. And in the beginning, it's fun. We talked about this the last time, the love bombing and they're everything that you thought they would be. And that's your Prince Charming. And you've been waiting for this white horse to arrive. And here it is. And they're like, hey. Then in reality, they just want to destroy you. Like everything that they loved about you, that they found about you, that they they pinpointed you out and picked you from this person and this, this group of people. 
Now they all want to take it away and destroy it, literally. So I told her that. I'm like, they want to destroy us and they will do anything that they can to make sure that that happens, especially if you have now decided, I'm going to walk away. I'm going no contact. I'm done with this. I'm not taking this abuse anymore. They will do anything. We talked about the smear campaign. Lord have mercy. Um, since this last episode, wow. If I could tell you the amount of new information I have found in my own personal experience, <laughs> I'm telling you what, and I did a, I did a reel about this the other day because it's the betrayal. It's not so much that you are like hurt by the situation. It's the betrayal because what will happen is you will be in it and you'll think like, Oh man, because even though you're through all the stages and like you have the love bombing and then you have the devaluing and the discard, like, and then it may recycle again. Like you're, you're like, okay, you know what? Like, I really do love him or her. And, you know, maybe it's just not that bad because you compare it. So like people with trauma, like me, like you've had a history of trauma, you will say, you know what? This isn't that bad because Lisa ain't hit me like so-and-so used to do. I've done Lisa, that. You know what I'm saying? I've done that. I've been like, well, some women get beat. I'm not getting beat. Maybe yeah. it's me. Maybe I should yeah. be happy in this. They're loyal to me. Maybe I should be happy. Mm -hmm. You find those mm -hmm. things like you will sit there and you'll be like, oh, well, you know, it ain't that bad. That's gaslighting your own self. Like yeah. you are literally gaslighting your own self. And we got to stop doing that. We got to stop doing that. We got to stop like say, like minimizing things just because you know what and your situation like you said like well you know what he's not beating me some people out here getting beat some people out here getting cheated on um okay so what <laughs> like so what like we have to stop doing that to ourselves and it takes so so many times for us to tell ourselves that because because of the fact that we think it could be worse we minimize ourselves we minimize our emotions and our feelings and what we, we, we deserve and what we're asking for is not that much. It's simple. It's easy. It's something that we give to like so freely every single day, right? Like what we're asking for is that time, that attention, um, security, um, reassurance, like things like that. And that's not asking too much. It's asking you to just be a genuine human being. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> what I but was it's like we was, convince ourselves that we're like asking for a lot like well life isn't like a rom-com you'll yes we will compare it to other yourself, things yeah exactly but if you're not happy you're not happy like and granted we can't expect other people to feel that you know and a lot of things that I'm learning with myself is like a lot of it has to come from healing you know what I'm saying I'm getting emotional you got to make sure you're good before right. you, you can bring right. anyone else into the picture. And we can't expect somebody to make us happy. But, but at the same time, what are you here for? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, just to exist. What are you, yeah. <laughs> like, what are you here for? Like, if you're not going to add value or like even oh what did I just put like something about dating with a purpose it was like if you are out here in a relationship I just put this in my notes um there's a purpose of a relationship or whatever it is that you're in so there has to be some kind of purpose right and then if it's not bringing you joy or adding to your life or bringing like value like then what's the point right then we might as well just go on and be by ourselves because we're just wasting each other's time. You're wasting my time. I'm wasting your time. We're wasting each other's time. Let's just go our separate way. Um, but I think it's so crazy because <laughs> like I like I un unveiled or revealed whatever the, the word may be, um, some information recently. And it was like, you will literally have that person in your home in your life, you know, thinking like, yeah, you know what? It was bad. That stuff was really bad. But you know what? Yeah, I'm going to just um move past that. And it's okay. It's okay. Like things are good now. He's being really nice. He's doing all these nice, genuine things. And or you'll make behind excuses. your back, 
Yes. Oh, well, he was just stressed. He's been working a lot. Yes. Or exactly. I haven't had much time to give him anything in the bedroom. So maybe it was just frustration. Yeah, absolutely. But you know what? We I think sometimes we like. Ooh, I think this comes from like, I don't know. I think we put our needs aside a lot of times. And then, like you said, you will like be like, well, you know what? Maybe it's because I did this or I haven't really been doing this either myself. Um, that's that's so unhealthy for us to do that, though. Like. It's you not get, selfish. Like, you get in a cycle of devaluing yourself mm -hmm. and it's just Absolutely. a slippery slope because once you're yeah. devaluing yourself then what you're expecting someone else to value you back up. Like it has to right. come from in here. So if right. you're already reducing your own value, already reducing your own value, what do you expect someone mm -hmm. else to do? It's like, um, what's that old saying that like, we our treat people, we teach people how to treat us. <laughs> That's well, what popped in my head. The, the one our grandparents used to say like, well, why buy the cow if you're giving them the milk? For yes. Free? Yes. Absolutely. absolutely, freaking lutely And, you know, the, the, the new age, you know, you see a lot of times like, well, if you're already, how's it go? Like if you're already doing wifely things and, you know, acting like a wife, then why, why would they want to take it? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I say you want to be married. Um, and you're like in this relationship and you're like, yeah, I'm just going to, you know what? Okay. It's, it's been five years. Um, but that's okay. Like we've had so many things going on. But I'm like, when is he going to ask me to marry him? Like, is he ever going to ask me to marry Why would he? Why would he? You know, and like a lot of times, like dating out here, dating out here, like trying to be newly single again um, and dating out here sucks for real. Like people expect you to just do all types of things, you know, right off the bat. And then it's like, so why would they? Why would they respect you? Why would they put value on whatever? Why would they want to try to take it further when you're already doing everything already, you know, and I'm guilty of that. Like, I'm so guilty of that. Like, it's like, why I'm, I'm wanting this, but it's like, why, why would they even give me that? Because I'm already giving them, you know, whatever outside of that. So, you know, my loyalty, I'm giving you loyalty. You're not giving me loyalty. Um, I'm treating this as it's already something when it's nothing <laughs> like, period. It's horrible. It, it's horrible out here, man. Be safe, y'all. <laughs> Trying to date. <laughs> so those those support groups, would you say, yes. is it, do some of these girls give you some tips to how to get out of it? Um, yes, they're very supportive. Um, I do want to say sometimes it can be a trigger warning. warning. Sometimes it can be overwhelming, especially like when you're, I find myself being overwhelmed the most when I'm deepest in it. And I feel like the trauma is so severe. Um, a lot of it would be a trigger warning, but you know, they're reaching out and that's what they're for. So you just kind of have to like know your limits with things. Um, but there's so many different things. So like there's some for like survivors, there's some for when you're still in it, but like, like out of it, like there's a, there's a mixed group that we have that I found on Facebook and it's like, um, and all you gotta do is like type in narcissism, you know, and not every group is going to be for you. Just like a counselor. I've been in therapy for two years now. Um, I joined after the abuse was probably one of the most severe times of my, my relationship with the ex narcissist of my life. Um, and I joined counseling. I definitely recommend counseling. Counseling is not going to be for like, not every counselor is going to be for you. Like you have to find the one I was just talking to, um, another twin mom the other day about counseling. And she was like, you know, I just started, but I just don't know. And I was like, and that's fine. Like not everybody's for you. I found mine based on her specialty. Um, and I looked for like what she specialized in for all the things that I'm like, okay, I guess. Yep like all the things that I need that I've been through, like traumas, anything like that. Okay. Any diagnoses or how I was feeling? Like, did she fit that, that, that what I want, what I need? Yes, she did. Um, so I told her, I'm like, if it doesn't work out, like that's just not your person and that's okay. Like find your person because not everybody is your, your person. So counseling, definitely recommend counseling. Um, supportive friends, like, 
you know, not everybody's going to get it. So having a friend who's maybe experienced narcissism is so vital. It's so key. Matter of fact, that is how I got involved in the business is because Kristen and I were um, in this like, I don't even know what you want to call it. Like it was just some random, it wasn't even narcissism, narcissism. It was like some like women's support group like about like healing or something. I can't remember because it's not up anymore. It's so weird. I don't know what happened to it, but I saw her share her story of the abuse that she experienced. And I was like, what? And I was like, oh my gosh, you know, just hit so close to home. So not, maybe not even a narcissism export, um, support group, but like a women's support group. I also go to a women's empowerment group once a month. Um, the groups on Facebook are so helpful, but like I said, can be triggering. You have to limit. Sometimes I limit my time. I can't sit on there. I'll get stuck sometimes, especially when I'm in it. Sprawling. Yes. And I'll get stuck in it and I'll read other people. And in the beginning though, what you do want to do is learn about it. There's so many good books. Um, oh man, here's a good one. Let me find it real quick. Um, there's books out there, but you want to educate yourself. Um, on narcissism. I know that sounds like, whoa, what? But you do, you want to educate yourself because that's the only way that you're going to understand what's going on. Forgiving what you can't forget is a good one and uh, prepare to be tortured. That is a really good book. Damn, um, what the a price title. you will pay. What? So damn, what a title. Right. For real. It says, uh, prepare to be tortured. The price that you would pay for dating a narcissist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's for real. Like in don't don't, don't gaslight yourself. Don't underestimate it. Don't whatever. Like, just don't do that to yourself. Just, just don't, please don't do that to yourself because it's not, it's not helping you get healing. It's not helping you move out of it. It's not helping you. It's just basically helping you to stay stuck is what it is because I did that a lot. Matter of fact, I was just going through some notes, some ideas that I had. And <laughs> I remember a time, like I almost said my narcissist, that the narcissistic ex would was sleeping with his phone. No lie. Um, laying in my bed in my house, I pay all the bills, pay the mortgage, everything in my bed with his phone. He was sleeping with his phone. It would either be in his pocket, under the pillow. Like, I'm just like sitting here like, what am I doing? Why am I putting up with this? Why am I even allowing this to happen? Like, this is my house. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is crazy. I'm um, not going to lie. I do that sometimes, but not on purpose. Like, I'll stick, <laughs> like, if my, if I'm lazy and haven't cleaned my side table and there's no room to set my phone down, I'll put it under my pillow. Well, I mean, okay. Um, I don't think that far in advance with stuff, though. Right, right, right. But I, my intentions are usually, and... per usually pretty pure. I just don't think that far in advance. There was a nightstand right next to this dude. He has a fan on every night and it was, he could have put the phone right there. Um, turning the phone over. I know, I know a lot of people do this on like habit, like face down. Um, you know, but don't, if your gut is telling you something, that's yeah. where I'm at right now. You know, if you're, you, we have those gut feelings for a reason. Sometimes it does come from trauma and experiences. And sometimes we overthink I'm an overthinker. I really am. Um, but I'm learning to trust myself because the times that I didn't trust my gut was the times that I should have trusted my gut. Like I was right, you know, like, and I, I didn't give myself the credit like at all. Cause I'm like, you know what, girl, you had a lot of people in your past that did this. You know, maybe you are putting your past on this person because that's what I was told. Like you're using your past experiences and people you've been with in the past because so-and-so did that. To you. And I almost said something on this thing that, I, that I would say to you, but not on here. Um, <laughs> it almost came right out of my mouth. Um, and I did, I did. I let it slide because I thought, you know what? You're right. I had so many things happen to me in my past and, and here all along, no, it was true. Like it, it freaking was true. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's where I'm at right now. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to stop. I'm not, I'm trusting my gut. If something don't feel right, it don't feel right. And you know what? Maybe he is the person who was made to, like sent for me. 
and I might ruin the whole thing. But at the same time, I do not want to heal from anything anymore. Like I'm just over it. I'm over trying to heal from other people's mess. You know, I'm done. Yes, I feel that. I would say the biggest thing is a support system, like just yes, in general. Absolutely. And it doesn't, it isn't always your family. Um, you guys can no. look back and check out my toxic, our toxic family episode. Okay. Sometimes it's yes. not family. Yes. Um, sometimes, oh, I got to tell you a funny story about that real quick. My grandma watched the episode. <laughs> Whoops. Um, I'm like, well. Sorry. No, did, she, sorry. did she give you any feedback? I mean, this is great. Did she give you any? Feedback? No, I, I found out from my aunt. She was like, oh, because I guess she subscribed to our YouTube. And thank you. No. <laughs> and she watched the episode. She never said anything to me. My aunt told me. I didn't say anything that wasn't true. So I mean, yeah. And you know what? You are entitled to your feelings. Those are your feelings. And your feelings matter. Your feelings are valid. Like. And if somebody gets offended by how they treated you, that's a them problem. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? Like if the shoe fits. Exactly. Like I'm, I always used to really care like, oh, I can't say that. That's going to hurt somebody's feelings or I better not say that. Um, I don't want them to know, you know, whatever. Now I'm just like, you know what? No, because your feelings, your feelings matter and they're valid. And like, that's what happened, you know? And if it was toxic, it was toxic. There's no sense in trying to put makeup on it and trying to put a mask over it trying to make it something else that it wasn't if it's toxic it's toxic period you know if they're toxic they're toxic period um and yeah. family a lot of times is and like you said finding a support group like you know I come to you and I was talking to you a little bit not everything during it or whatever but it's so important to have somebody who understands um if they've never been in it it's cool like you can still have somebody who listens um but it's, it's really, it's really helpful to have somebody that you can trust. That's the biggest thing. Maybe they've been there. Maybe they haven't. The biggest thing is finding somebody who you can trust that you can talk to and get these feelings out because in that relationship with this person, mm -hmm. you felt alone the whole time. You felt like nobody was going to understand you at all. Felt and stuck. yes, stuck. Nobody really knows what I'm going through because he's not hitting me. Um, they're not going to think. And I had somebody and I, you know what, if they watch it, they watch it. I had somebody in my family tell me, um, uh, uh, one thing, one thing that people hear a lot when they're in an abusive relationship is, well, what did you do? What did you do? I had somebody tell me, um, well, you know, maybe you should just like give him some and, you know, then he'll go back to like helping you. Or, um, if you just do this, then maybe he'll do that. You know, just that's so toxic. Like that is so toxic. Like, don't do that. <laughs> don't, if somebody comes to you, maybe you're not the one experiencing it. Maybe it's a friend that's coming to you and you're watching this because you want to know how to better help her um, or him. Um, listen, because it's like you said, it's so hard to prove like mental abuse and emotional abuse, but it's so real. And it's so, in my opinion, it's worse. I've had all, um, and in my opinion, I would have rather he was physically abusing me. You and know, that, it, that might be very, like, what's it called? That might be very, um, what's the word? Conflicting? Not That's not the word I want to use. It starts with a C. Not Wait, contradicting. That but was whatever. the hardest thing saying. about working when I worked for the sheriff's department. I was a 911 dispatcher. And when we would take some of these abuse calls... I would get women who would start yelling at me like, why are you treating me like I'm the bad guy? Or why are you asking me all these questions? Do you not believe me? And I was like, look, like, I'm sorry that I got to make you relive this right now. But the truth of the matter is there are mm -hmm. vindictive women out there and vindictive men that lie. Mm -hmm. So I have to, my job is to get to the truth here, get your side, his side, because, you know, the famous line is there's always three sides to a story, his side, her yeah. side, and the truth. So... I don't want to have to ask you these questions. I don't want you to relive the trauma, but the reality is there's a lot of, there's women out there. I don't want to say a lot, but there's women out there that have lied because someone cheated on them or they yes. just wanted to be an asshole. And so they made yeah. up some stuff and it, it's, or they lose their virginity to some guy and they regret it the next day. So they cry the R word. So it's just, 
Yeah. You don't want to think those things, but the reality is, is that kind of stuff does happen. And And, yeah, a couple points with that. And I didn't like having to do it, but it was my job. And yes, you you saw things that other people don't see. Like you got to see the other side, the person who lies and you got to see the person that didn't lie. So it was like, I'm sorry. I don't want to have to do this, but right. (laughs) Well, and two, there's a couple things. And I didn't realize how many, this may seem, this may seem crazy to say this or come off a little like bizarre, but like, I didn't realize how many women narcissists that there were. Um, And I don't mean to be sexist, but it's like my, I'm just going off my experience and I had never met a woman, a female narcissist, but being in these support groups, we, there's both men there's and, and women that are in these support groups trying to get help, trying to understand um, because they love the person. Some of them are trying to get out. Some of them are just there because they need somebody who understands to talk to. It takes a while to leave an abusive relationship. I think it said the seventh time, usually if they make it, um, that to that seventh time. Um, but also I was going to say, uh, oh, and narcissists like to be the victim a lot too. So it is important to get the full story because, they might not be the actual victim, but say they are. Okay. We have, okay. And then, um, also my other point when you were talking was reactive abuse happens a lot too. So for example, you have the abuser, you have the the victim, um, and the abuser, like reactive abuse is real. Like, so for real, oh, I had my friend tell me, you know, and I've been in there too. I've been in the situation too you do things that you don't think that you are normally going to do. And you react in a situation that you don't, because I think our fight or flight kicks in Mm -hmm. um, is where I think reactive comes from, but maybe we'll have to look more into that. But like, um, and you're going to like, they may be abusing. You You might get to the point where like, I am done. I'm tired. I'm sick and tired of this. Like I'm going to, I'm going to fight back. And so, yeah, it is so important, but it's, it happens. It happens a lot. Um, I found myself there before. Um, I know my friend, my friend's story is wild, but um, it happens. It happens so much. And then they'll sit there and record it. And so that way it looks like that the victim You're was the actually the abuser. Yeah. And they'll sit there and they'll record it. So when authorities come or they go to court or whatever, they can be like, look what she did to me. I didn't do nothing to her. She did this to me. I was well, just like, reacting. What was Amber Heard and Johnny Depp? And you said, Amber's like recording herself being an asshole. And you're like, did you think this was going to help you? Like, you look awful right now. I don't know why she did that. Did you see, God, it was a few years ago. There was these kids that kidnapped this little... Well, he wasn't little. He was like a teenager. But I think he had like some mental illnesses or something, autism or something. But they kidnapped him and they live streamed it on Facebook. And I'm like, why Why are we filming ourselves committing crimes now? Like, I don't understand. (laughs) Why would you do that? It was so dumb. They, I mean, they immediately got arrested, thankfully. And like the kid was saved and nothing too bad happened to him. But. I'm sure having a mental illness and then being traumatized like that's going to take him way extra yeah. therapy that it would take one of us. But yeah, it's like, yeah. I'm like, really? What What are we doing? Why? I don't, don't understand don't it. Don't film yourself doing crimes, guys. It's not going to look good for you. Okay. <laughs> I mean, but please do. Please don't do the crime. And if you do do the crime, well, yeah, yes, I mean, film yourself. <laughs> that makes it yes. easier for when I'm when I'm done with law school, you're going to make my job easy. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> like, look, he popped yeah. himself. Case closed. <laughs> right. Exactly. Like, here, here's exhibit A and case closed. <laughs> Prosecution rest. <laughs> right. Exactly. So I think for part three, guys, we'll probably do maybe more of an upbeat take on narcissism. Maybe our part three will be life after narc. Yes, because you can have a life after that. And my friend told me in the very beginning, two years ago, um, when I actually found out about narcissism and was like, wait, baby, okay, is that was, you know, I, I had to like, I had an eye opener and she was like, it's so beautiful on the other side when you get there. Like, it's so beautiful. But it took me a long time before I was able to actually see that. And it is, it is so beautiful. Like, And it's not easy. It's going to be a struggle. No. There's going to be days where you second guess yourself or maybe Mm -hmm. I should just 
be happy with what I got. You know, you'll mm-hmm. go back, like we were talking about, you'll go back into that mindset, like, well, it's not that bad. Yeah. But yeah. Just, I have days still like that. Like I'll have days where it's like, man, this is kind of hard. If I just had, you know, uh, well, when he was here and, you know, sometimes he did do this and sometimes he brought food and sometimes I didn't have to cook. <laughs> like, you know what, girl, you're just going to have to cook <laughs> because it's not worth it. <laughs> Uh, there's a light on the other side of the tunnel. You just got to get there. And sometimes the tunnel can yeah. get a little dark, but just remember that there is a light. Just Absolutely. Gotta keep on going. But these have been Absolutely. fun. Well, I wouldn't say they've been fun, but they've been enlightening. Um, and you know that we hope that we just help somebody. That's all we're doing, even if it's just one, you know. And, you know, you just, you never know, like there was stuff going on in my personal life that Karen didn't know about until recently, because I've never been one to really share stuff. So I'm just, it's just not my thing. But, you know, that's why I said support system, reach out to people, even if it's not family, like, you know, myself, I don't have one side of my family isn't the most supportive, but even if it's friends that become family, like having someone to lean on and help you through it and um help you know if you can't get out of the house a friend that's going to help you drop off applications for a new apartment or someone that's gonna you know people just to have your back and help take some of the load off mm-hmm. and it's to can just be listen. friends it can yeah. be co-workers it can be you know neighbors <laughs> obviously yeah. professionals yeah yeah like somebody who you, you can trust with your feelings, because you know what? You can't trust everybody with your feelings. You can't trust everybody with your emotions. Like you just can't. And sometimes you think that you can and you can't. So just be careful. Um, it's a very, what do you want to say? Slippery slope. Yes. And it's detrimental and we don't want to add trauma on top of trauma. Right. So, um, it's like it's be lonely. careful who you share it to, but also know that sometimes mm-hmm. you might be surprised. Someone that you don't expect can end up being your biggest adversary. So, and a lot of times too, like people, you will never know, like that we had certain things in common. Like a lot of times, you think like, man, I'm the only one who's ever been through that, or like I'm the only one who's ever experienced that. She's not going to understand what I'm talking about. She's not going to know what I'm talking about. And then you find out you got more in common than you thought. Like, and it's not always good. <laughs> like, it's not the fact that we both may like, I'm just throwing this out here, pizza. Um, Like, oh yeah, we both love pizza. Great. Let's go get pizza together. No, it's like, oh shoot. We both had childhood trauma. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes like, you bond off of that big shit. <laughs> right. Exactly. And that's how you form your connections with people. And that's what we're here for is just to connect with other people, even if it's, not always the good stuff because there's a reason and a purpose for it. And I think it is so that we can connect and help others later. Yeah. Well, this has been fun guys. Well, see, yeah. I, I say fun in a, it, I don't mean fun in like a fun, fun. Like, no, no, I agree. Like, yeah, it was good. I think in it's a good. learning way and yeah. A yeah. soothing, getting it off our, and, and just doing what we love. Like, yeah. I, I, I missed talking to you guys so much it was such it's been such a busy few months this was like my normalcy there for a while like I missed it Um, yes it was life it was life for us for a long time you know that was just what what we did and that was part of our life so yeah and we're not going anywhere we are going to build this thing all the way to the top we're going to be the next Joe Rogan's I don't know who that is (laughs) Joe Rogan yeah should I know who that is yeah, I'm pretty sure you know who it is. Maybe you're just not familiar with his name. He's like one of the, he is like the biggest podcaster in the business. And his, he's like one of the first. Oh. I'll send you, Google I'll that. send you a thing. Yeah. I'll send you a thing. <laughs> okay, I have to All Google right. that. <laughs> so look out for part three next week, guys. And then, um, and then we're going to start doing some fun stuff. We're going to talk about clairsentience, um, and all that kind of weird stuff, um, crystals and all that crap and then we're gonna do some maybe another sex episode i thought that would maybe be fun something a little spicy and fun and maybe a little more upbeat than our last one where we're we're both talking about how we never want to do anything (laughs) but maybe a little more spicy this time a little more yeah and you know maybe for the twin moms too um again i know we talked about that in the beginning too right uh 
and struggles like so refresh your episode on twin mom like now yeah. that we, the twins have gotten a little older mm-hmm. yeah like i was seeing no sleep like all at last night like my son woke up every hour on the hour yeah so you know all right guys well we will see you next week make sure you like subscribe and all that jazz and thank you guys for everything we're so glad to be back yes Bye. Bye. Bye.